Beagle Stone is one of the largest natural stone quarries in the industry. Located in Wisconsin, the company operates several quarries and produces over 100 varieties of natural stone for building exterior and interior applications. One of Beagle Stone's products that has become especially popular with architects, builders, and homeowners is natural thin veneer. Hello, I'm Dean Johnson. I'm here to talk about natural thin veneer in the installation process. Natural thin veneer is a natural stone that's cut thinner than full veneer stone. Because of its lighter weight and its narrow width, it has some unique advantages. Let me point out that natural thin veneer can be installed on any structurally sound surface. No foundation is needed, making it ideal for fireplaces and exteriors of existing homes or commercial buildings. Natural thin veneer can also be blended with full width veneer on gable roof ends. This combination matches perfectly, providing a seamless appearance. Also, the lighter weight of the thin stone makes it more efficient to ship, easier to move around on a job site, and easier and quicker to install than full width veneer. In addition, the thinner profile of the stone makes it a great alternative for projects with limited space or other special considerations. In just a minute, Dick Kaiser, Beagle Stone's masonry consultant, will provide us with more information on natural thin veneer and how to install it. This video covers basic installation principles. Now please keep in mind, it's important to follow the product installation guides, wear proper safety equipment, and check and adhere to local building codes. Hi, I'm Dick Kaiser from Beagle Stone. I'm here today to talk about our natural thin veneers, a natural stone that we take and we saw it thin to an inch, inch and a quarter thick compared to our full size stone that's four, four and a half, five inches thick. Uh, density on a stone is almost, you know, it's hard. Water exhaustion is almost zero. And we make it in like 54 different types, uh, whether it be the rectangle pieces or we go into the pieces that are like a cobble look or something like that where you have your own pieces. The really special thing about uh, our thin veneer is that we can cut 90 degree corners to make it look like a full size stone. Can't compare the difference, you can just see it, it's the same as a full size stone. And if you have a specialty corner or something like that, we can cut a 135 degree corner, which would uh, still make it look like a full size veneer. There's just endless things that we can do with our stone. Now that we talked about the stone, I'd like to talk about the different applications uh, where you can apply it to. Right here we have drywall right now. We got to screw the wire mesh to the drywall, then apply your scratch coat of mortar. And all you want to do is really cover up the wire mesh. You don't need a lot of mortar there or something like that. You just want to surface the mortar there to apply your stone. Um, that's one of the applications. You could go over cement board or Dura Rock. If you're going over cement board or Dura Rock, you don't need the wire mesh. Uh, or the scratch coat or something like that. Even if you're going over a block wall, anything like that, uh, brick wall, no brick wall in an existing house, as long as the surface is clean, you don't need your wire mesh or anything like that. The only thing I would recommend if you're going over a new concrete poured wall or something like that, to etch the masonry, etch the con concrete to get the oil off because they do use a lot of oil on their forms or something like that. Then if you're doing it outside of a house. EcoStone recommends using a weep system as part of your NTV installation. A system like this will allow separation between your NTV and your structural wall. Once installed, the ridges in this product will provide an airspace to the moisture to weep to the lowest position of your wall and out. As you see, we still use our tar paper, our shoe cavity, our pink foam, our wire mesh, and our scratch coat. And when you're doing your wire mesh, make sure you lap your corners at least 16 inches. If it's a little bit more, that's okay. If you're doing a vertical and your horizontal joint, have at least a three inch lap there. If that's a little bit more, that's okay too. It's uh, just that you have your three inches. After that, you get it that far, secure your wire completely, and just like normal, do your uh, scratch coat and you're all set to go. So now a little, another little hint is when you're starting on the bottom, I usually do, and it helps me out a lot, is lay a 2x4 down, level it, now you have a good starting base to lay your stone. I have a spot on the bottom there where ground will not be up underneath my stone in the winter time that the frost will try to loosen up my stone, and I have a spot for moisture that it can dry out. Now that Dick has gotten us up to speed on surface prep, let's take a look at the tools needed to finish the job. Here's some of the tools they'd be using. We have the trowel, we have a hammer, a tape measure, our tuck pointers, a couple different sizes to fill the joints as we go. Our brush to clean up the stone when we're finished. Hammer and chisel, just if we have to trim a little stone, we can. 
and a level, just level the stone so it looks good to the eye. If you're not certain how to calculate the amount of material needed for the job, check with the installation guide or a sales rep. The rest of the supplies you will need are the same as those used with full-size veneer with the addition of an acrylic bonding agent. Okay, we have the walls all prepared. Now we're going to start mixing the mortar. And what I do with the mortar, I go to a two to one ratio. So it'd be, I have my four shovelfuls of sand already in there, so I'm going to put two shovelfuls of mortar, a type S mortar. Take it, we mix it up dry just a little bit. It just seems like it's a little bit easier to mix dry than it is when you add water to it right away. Now I have my bonding agent, add my Acro 60. And then we add our water. In water, I'm usually pretty careful adding my water. I don't want too much and I won't want too little. You're always going to add more water to it, but it's hard to take it out when you have it too much. Okay, it's getting pretty close. Uh, it's going to be consistent when you're mixing your mortar. Um, keep your two to one ratio and your bonding agent. Make sure that uh, usually if I'm mixing a half a batch or something like that, I usually use like a seven ounce coffee cup per half a batch. I'm using a full batch, I might go to a 10 ounce coffee cup. It's always fun getting all the corners of the wheelbarrow when you're mixing it by hand that you don't have no sand showing. A little bit of sand there yet. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I think I'm ready to go to work now. Okay, we're just finishing up putting our scratch coat over our wire mesh. Um, just so making sure we're getting our wire mesh covered up evenly and all that. Doesn't have to be real smooth, but you want the, just to cover up the wire really good. Um, we're going to give this a chance to set up right now, and then we're going to go lay some stone over some door rock. Here we have our stone all laid out already, just to see what kind of pieces we have and what pieces we have to work with. Once in a while, we need to trim a piece. Um, you can try to hammer, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, just never seems to break where you want it to break. Easiest way is... Uh, a diamond blade. This is one that would fit on any skill saw or anything and most people have a, a skill saw that would work. Also I have a big chop off saw where we can put a 12 inch blade on there and that really works nice for your bigger jobs and all that. One thing to remember make sure you use your safety gear, your earplugs and your safety glasses. Makes the job a lot easier. Okay, now what I'm doing is spreading mud on the back of the stone, trying to get the whole complete stone covered with mortar so uh, the better chance I have if I'm doing an outside job, I don't want water to get behind the stone or anything like that. When I get it that far, I put a little bit extra on the bottom of my stone so when I push my stone up on a wall, I'll get my bottom bed joint completely full of mud. Here we are, same process, we're putting a bed of stone, mud on the back of the stone and uh, it's like not too much, not too little, a little bit extra on the bottom of the stone. Then thing, get our stone close to in place, push it in, pull it down, take the level, level the top, we're set. Now we just have to fill our end joints in a little bit right away. Just push the mud in good and solid in there so you haven't got an air gap where water could catch on you or anything like that. Push the mud in the bottom bed joint. Clean off the top. 
Okay, this one's done. We're ready for our next stone. Same thing is just, like I said, put a nice bit of mud on your stone, make sure it's all covered. A little bit extra on the bottom. Okay, we'll give our mortar a chance to set up a little bit. So right now we're just raking the mortar back a little bit to get the detail out of the stone. You don't have to rake, rake it back real deep, just a little bit. And after that, we just brush it just to smoothen out the joints real nice and to clean up the stone a little bit. There are sealers that you can use and cleaners that you can use for our stone. They're on the website. Um, sealers will give it like a wet look or you can give a sealer to give it a dry look. Uh, sealer with a wet look will really bring out the colors and really make them look sharp. As you can see, Beagle Stone's natural thin veneer offers the beauty and durability of full veneer natural stone, but it's easier to handle and install. If you have any questions about this product or would like more information, feel free to contact Beagle Stone, visit their website, or contact one of their local dealers.